Hi, my name is Quinn, and I'm a member of the FreeFlyer technical support team. Today, I'm going to talk about performing coverage analysis for a spacecraft constellation. To demonstrate this, we're going to walk through the constellation coverage sample mission plan. The constellation coverage mission plan demonstrates the features in FreeFlyer that allow a user to model constellations and easily perform coverage and contact analyses for them. Today, we will only focus on coverage analysis. Coverage analysis can be easily configured for any number of spacecraft as well as for varying sizes and shapes of point groups. By performing this analysis, a user can readily determine what areas are being covered by their spacecraft. This mission plan uses a point group distributed across the globe. As a spacecraft with a sensor flies over the points, they are recolored based on how many times they have been seen by a spacecraft. This shows areas of high coverage in magenta and low coverage in red. As you can see, the majority of the globe slowly fades to a magenta color, indicating that those points have been seen at least six times by different spacecraft. However, the poles remain in red, indicating that they have not been covered by any spacecraft. Now, let's examine how the Constellation Coverage Mission Plan works. To launch the mission plan, you can simply click on it from the FreeFlyer home screen. When you launch the mission plan from the home screen, it immediately brings you to the user interface that allows you to set up the different constellations. Before we do that, let's stop the script and take a look at the inner workings of the mission plan. First, let's take a look at how to initialize a constellation using scripting. This freeform sets up the different constellations used in this mission plan. For now, let's only examine the Walker constellation. The Walker constellation is set up by a procedure that calls a user interface, allowing the user to input different variables to define the constellation. The variables are then used to define a spacecraft formation, shown here as CONST for constellation. The constellation is built out using two for loops. The first for loop is used to iterate through the number of planes defined by the user, each time incrementing the right ascension of the ascending node. The interior for loop is used to define all of the remaining orbital elements for the spacecraft. Lastly, we assign some variables for contact analysis and visualization. Now, we'll move from initializing the constellation to Freeform 5 to set up the point groups for the coverage analysis. Here, Case 3 is the global point group option from the user interface. The first thing we do is we set the coverage point group point definition flag to equal 1. This evenly spaces the points around the globe. After that, we assign the number of points in the point group based off the option from the user interface. Then, we update the coverage and revisit arrays based off of the number of spacecraft in the constellation as well as the number of points in the point group. Lastly, we resize the points for improved visualization. Finally, we'll move from Freeform 5 to Freeform 9 to examine the propagator for this mission plan. We use the elapsed time property from the first spacecraft in the constellation as the break condition in our while loop, and we propagate it until it reached the specified analysis duration. Next, we call the Perform Coverage Analysis for Formation procedure, which iterates over each spacecraft in the constellation and calls the pointgroup.coverage method to update the coverage across all of the points and spacecraft. Next are some calculations and updates related to performing contact analysis, since we're not talking about that today, we'll jump ahead to the next section. At the end of the while loop, we update the window overlays with the spacecraft epic as well as information about the coverage, including the percentage of points covered. Finally, we update both view windows and step the entire formation. Now, let's go through the user interface windows and run the entire mission plan. When you start the Constellation Coverage Sample Mission Plan, the first user interface shows you a number of constellations to choose from, such as Iridium Next, Plant Labs, OneWeb, and Starlink. For now, we're going to stick with the custom Walker constellation. The next user interface window prompts you to select the sensor half angle as well as the region to analyze. We'll select the global region and increase the number of points to 5000 for better coverage analysis. The next window relates directly to the Walker constellation and allows you to define the specific parameters of the constellation. We'll stick with the default parameters for this example. That will be five orbital planes with 12 spacecraft per plane, 
with an inclination of 60 degrees and a semi-major axis of 7,300 kilometers. We'll also use a low eccentricity to keep the spacecraft in a nearly circular orbit. Lastly, we'll use a 270 degree argument of perigee. This final window prompts the user to enter data specific to the analysis, such as the start epoch, the duration, and whether or not to perform contact analyses. We're going to select no for contact analysis. If we were performing contact analysis, we would enter which ground stations we wanted to use. Lastly, we will select the no option for view spacecraft as group, since our constellation is not large enough to need it. You now see that the spacecraft are propagating and that the coverage is beginning to fill in. If you look at the window overlay, you will see that the number of points is increasing as spacecraft continue to pass over the points around the globe. You will also see that the percentage of points covered is increasing and that the points are beginning to fade to a magenta color as indicated by the legend in the window overlay. This completes our overview of the Constellation Coverage Sample Mission Plan. If you found this video useful, you can check out the rest of our how-to videos on our AI Solutions YouTube page. Otherwise, if you have any additional questions or issues, please feel free to reach out to our technical support team at any point in time. You can do this by contacting us through email at techsupport at ai-solutions.com or by calling us at 301-306-1756, extension 2.